Pat with Pat's Two Cents, reading John. We're putting everything in its place, y'all. Everything in its proper perspective. All right, here we go. John chapter one, starting at verse one. In the beginning was the word. And the word, that's with a capital W. That means Jesus Christ. In the beginning, before Mary, before Joseph, before Jerusalem, in the beginning was the word. Before the earth was formed, mm, in the beginning was the word. Before the devil, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. <coughs> And the word was God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. That includes the earth, the stars, the constellations, the moon, the sun, people, animals. Go back before that. That includes the angels and the demons and the devil. That includes everything that was made, even light itself. You hear me? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. You notice light and dark are complete opposites. Mm -hmm. Satan can't comprehend God. He wants to imitate him, but he can't comprehend him. Verse 7, the same came for a witness to bear witness of that light that all men through him might believe. Now, I'm not going any further right here. <laughs> yes, I will, because it describes Jesus. So it takes you beyond the shadow of a doubt. Verse 8, he was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Now we're talking about John the Baptist. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Talking about Jesus. And the word, the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, the name of Jesus. 13. Oh, boy which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Stopping right there. If you take a jeweler and he picks out this rock, and starts chiseling, chopping, and doing whatever he does to cut that diamond. He has to know how to cut it to get the most brilliance out of that diamond. The diamond cannot cut itself. The diamond can't polish itself. The diamond can't bring out its own brilliance. Only the one that's honing it can do that. And I want to share with you. Those of you who don't know who God is, whatever beauty you have in you, whatever abilities and strengths you have, comes from the light of God, comes from the brilliance of God and God's love. Listen, y'all, what that word just said is Jesus is God. They're one and the same. You can't separate them. God uses Father, Son, and Holy Spirit so we can wrap it around our little pea brains. But we really don't get what all that really means. And I'm not going to sit here and explain it to you. What I am going to share with you is the maker always has more authority over the made. The maker always has all the control over what it is creating. Whether it's a jeweler over a diamond or the architect building and designing a building. The designer is the one with the authority. The designer is the say-so. That's the head one in charge. That's the one who says what goes where and how. 
and when. For those of you who are afraid of demons, for those of you who are afraid of the devil himself, for those of you who are afraid of death, for those of you who are afraid of sickness, you have to remember, God said, and for those of you who think only the devil deals with evil, God said out of his own mouth in the book of Isaiah, I create good and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all those things. So when John says there's nothing made that, that wasn't made by God, guess what? That all That's all inclusive, baby. So for those of you who think that you have a right and a reason to be afraid of the, of the things that move in the dark, all you got to do is call on the light of God, baby, because God is the one in control. God is the one with the power. God is the one with the authority. And if you happen to be uh, smart enough or wise enough to get in Christ, guess what? You have the authority too, in his name only. It's not because you're all that in a bag of chips. It's not because you're one of those special ones that happen to be uh, the special chosen frozen that God said, oh, I got to have that. No. It's all about who Jesus is. And we are who we are only in Christ Jesus. Only by the power of of the Holy Ghost. So don't get the big head. Don't get the smelling yourself and thinking you all that. No. Sorry, Charlie. God is all that. Jesus Christ, our Savior, is all that. The Holy Ghost is all that. And everything else comes under that baby cakes. Everything. Sin, sickness, death, the devil, demons, all of that comes up under him. Whatever these little schemes of, of mice and men, that the, the, the evil that's in, in the high places, wickedness in high places, and all these governments planning and scheming, the Illuminati, all of this nonsense that men think they're getting over on. They may get to play in the backyard for a hot minute before the Lord inhales and sucks them out of this earth. But guess what? When it's all said and done and all the dust settles, we're going to know who belongs to Jesus because we're going to be the ones living in the highest place there is to live in. The highest place. Living at a much higher level than we can even fathom right now. And all these folks and all these entities and all these little arenas that think they got power. They got a little bit of power because they either got money, clout, witchcraft, the occult, the Illuminati, whatever it is. Money, whatever their little power structure is. It is crumbs. Nothing but crumbs in comparison to who God is. And the, the minute you catch that. The minute you decide, I know in whom I believe, that's when you're going to stop being so easily manipulated by the enemy. His little tricks, his little schemes, his little lies. Oh, you're going to stop being so easily manipulated because you know. You know in whom you believe. You know who you're wrapped up, tied up in. Mm-hmm. Satan can't wrap you around his finger. Satan can't pull the wool over your eyes. Satan can't make you go for the okie doke, bamboozle you, fool you, trick you, play you. He can't do that when you're caught up in the truth of the light of the love of God. When you are in Christ Jesus, you're in his word. The Holy Spirit is in you. Can no devil in hell or no devil nowhere jerk you around can't happen because you know who you are do you know who jesus is do you know who god is do you know in whom you believe do you really know see let me share this with you 
Years ago, when I was in New York, you know, my parents, I was born and raised in Brooklyn. And one time I came around the corner. Y'all never heard this story. I came around the corner from the store. And this guy was standing on the corner. Never saw him. I thought he was waiting to cross the street. The man reached up under my skirt and grabbed. And I hit his hand and ran. Took off running like a bat out of you know where. He scared me. So I came running upstairs. Pop, pop. Who did I call? I didn't call my neighbors. I didn't grab a weapon. I came running home calling my father. Why? Number one, I knew my father was home. Number two, I knew who my father was and what he was capable of. Mm -hmm. I didn't call my mother. I didn't call my brothers. Oh, no. I knew my father could handle it. I had all the confidence in the world. And I ran him out to the porch and pointed that guy out. He was still stupid enough to stand out there. And my father grabbed his jacket and his hat, his cap, and went down the stairs and went marching down the street. My mother and I watched from the porch, from the upstairs terrace. And my father marched up, and the man didn't see him coming because his back was towards him. My father grabbed that man's arm and spun him around. Listen to what I'm talking about, authority, y'all. He spun him around and he pointed to the apartment and he, he was reaming him up and down. That boy took off like a bat out of you. He took off faster than I did. Now, let me share this with you. Y'all are in Christ Jesus. The Lord himself is your savior. What are you doing being afraid? What are you afraid of? What are you sitting there allowing the enemy to threaten you and manipulate you and jerk you around? Make you buy into his little silly lies? Don't you know who your father is? Don't you know what he's capable of? Let me, okay, thank you, Lord. Forgot about that too. Listen, I was telling Rashad that the other night I was attacked by a demonic entity. All right. And when I was attacked, a sucker presses into my chest and I feel a pain in my lower back. And I said, no, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I was mad. I woke up and I said, whatever that sucker tried to put on me, back on him a thousand or a hundred times, whatever I said, back to sender. And then I said, Lord, would you send your angels? Because I know who my daddy is. Would you send your angels to torment every demon that ever tries to infiltrate my dreams, that ever tries to touch me, make them so sorry that they came anywhere near the border of my property since it's already covered with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Would you send your angels to torture, torment, and apply exceeding pain, more pain than they could ever get from hell itself? just for messing with me in Jesus' name. I went back to sleep, slept like a baby, and the rest of my dreams were just fine. Why? I know who my daddy is. I can't do the devil any harm, but baby God and his angels can. And all I got to do is use the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, I've got supernatural power. Hmm. How? Because I plugged into the source, y'all. That's why. You laying in your bed in the middle of the night and you get some demon pouncing on you and pinning you down to your bed. You better open your mouth and rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Listen. You may not be able to articulate because he may, the demon may have you so weak that all you can do is mumble. So uh, <clears throat> indis indistinguishable in words, in the natural. But guess what? God knows how to make that demon hear every single word 
that you say. And when you say, I bind, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, that sucker's got to obey. He's got to line up with the authority that's in you because of Jesus Christ. God with us. Now, when are you going to stop being bullied by the enemy? When are you going to stop being bullied and, and intimidated by the news that's out there? Some of y'all spend more time talking about what they said on the news. And I'm not, I'm not talking about our conversation today, y'all. Don't take it personally. I'm talking about folks out there all day long. All they doing is repeating what the news said. Did you hear what the news guy said? Did you? They're calling. They're talking on the phone like a like the grapevine, like they passing down some gossip. And they talk more about what the bad news is, what the government threats are, more than what the Bible says more than God's precious promises. Yeah, okay, so they may have an issue with this, that, or the other, but God's word says, my father promised me. And that's all you need to know. So what if they decide to stop this from coming to you? So what if they decide you can't do that without your a particular credential. So what if they snatch your goodies from you and that's all you got coming? Guess what? God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think according to the power that works in us, in you, according to the power that works. Listen, y'all, you got to work that power. You can stand there all day long and you can look at, a, at a, um, a water pump. You can be thirsty from walking miles on the desert because your car broke down and you're about to faint from thirst and you got a water pump sitting in front of you. Baby, you can stare at it. You can pray at it. You can hope and, and wish and dream. But until you take your hand and work that sucker and pump it, you ain't getting no water. Hmm. So how are you going to pump up the power that's already in you? The power of God's Holy Spirit. How are you going to pump it up? You quote God's word. You pray to the source. Pour your heart out to God. You repent of anything by not just apologizing, but making up your mind, you ain't playing that mess no more. And you ask God to answer you as you take authority. You take the name of Jesus. You say, in the name of Jesus, I command that to stop. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, I bind and shut this down. I cast that out. I rebuke the other. In the name of Jesus. Not in my name. Not in my daddy's name. In the name of Jesus. You hear me? When my husband got bad news about his family member. And he was sitting there with tears coming down his face. He could barely hold his head up. I was standing above him with my hand on the back of his neck. Rebuking stroke. I rebuke stroke in the name of Jesus. I rebuke heart attack in the name of Jesus. I rebuke embolisms from the brain to the heart to the toes in the name of Jesus. You will not stroke out. You will not have high blood pressure. You will not have a sugar attack. I rebuke all of that in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke death in Jesus' name. You shall not die, Milton, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Why? I knew who my daddy was. Milton didn't have to succumb to the bad news. We rise above that crap because we know who our daddy is. When I laid on the couch, when I was, <clears throat> before I started dating Milton, and my heart was going pickety-pack, pickety-pack, 
And I didn't know what was going on, but I was suffering from palpitations for about a year and a half. Every time those palpitations started, I rebuked the palpitations. I commanded the palpitations to stop while my heart I commanded to be according to God's original design and purpose in Jesus' name. I rebuked heart attack in the name of Jesus. Sitting in the choir stand, having pigged out on pork for a whole week, having not eaten pork for over two years, I overdid it. My system was bombarded and all of a sudden the room starts spinning and I break out in a profuse sweat. My left ear goes deaf and the side of my face goes numb. I knew that was a stroke crawling up my body. And I said, oh, no, we ain't having that. I didn't have time to tell everybody what was going on. I had to battle this myself. Time was of the essence. I said, no, drip, dummy sweat dripping off of me. And I'm bracing myself because I don't want to fall out of my chair. And I'm saying, I rebuke stroke in the name of Jesus. I command my blood pressure to go down right now in the name of Jesus. Go down, go down, go down, go down in Jesus' name. I rebuke stroke. I rebuke high blood pressure in the name of Jesus. Oh, I went down the list. Within about a minute and a half, the spinning stopped. The left, the left, the, my left ear, the hearing popped back in, and my face. You know how your face feels when you're getting over Novocaine at the dentist. It was getting over Novocaine in, in warp speed. It was just stinging and spark and, and and all kind of prickling sensations. But my feeling came back, and I knew. Using the name of Jesus stopped that stroke dead in its tracks. Do you know who your daddy is? Do you really? Then why do you get so bent out of shape so easily? You can, I, listen. Uh, I would say during the first three years after my husband passed away, because see, so, well, the one thing I want to say about Satan, he plays dirty. He'll catch you when you are, he'll catch you when you are at your lowest ebb, when you're mourning a relationship, mourning a death. When you're feeling sorry for yourself, when you just ran into some bad fortune, some things just happening, you're still recovering from it. He plays dirty that way. He kicks you when you're down. Well, let me tell you this. You spend this year getting used to telling the devil where to take his crap and where to shove it. You want to tell somebody y'all and tell him where to shove it? Tell the devil where to shove his crap. He tries to shove something in your face and make you swallow depression, anxiety, frustration, intolerance, anger, rage, whatever the case may be. You up, you spit that stuff right back out. No, 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 no. That ain't mine. That's yours. Back to sender. I rebuke depression and I rebuke those thoughts. I rebuke those feelings in the name of Jesus. They're not mine. I'm blessed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I rebuke you, Satan. Get up out of my face and take your crap with you in Jesus' name. And then say this. I command all evil to stay as far away from me as the east is from the west in the name of Jesus, 24-7. You may have to say it five or six times a week, but you say it because you'll notice that the demonic attacks will dwindle down by at least 80-90%, just like that. Why? You know who your daddy is. You know what name to drop. You want to do some name dropping? Drop the name of Jesus. Like, like what's his face? Drop the mic. You know how you see people, they drop the mic. Yeah, you drop the mic. You drop the mic on the devil in the name of Jesus. That's what you do. You drop the name of Jesus. Don't you know who I know? I know Jesus Christ. We're connected, baby. So you can't do nothing here. Yeah, 
That's what you do. You put the devil in his place while he's trying to put you down. No, you put him down and out. That's what you do. That's what you do in Jesus' name. Yeah. Ain't no monkey going to stop no show up in here. When you get through doing something for the Lord, like I'm doing right now, you bind the spirits of retaliation. They can't touch your family, your friends, anybody that pertains to you, your, your church members, your items, your money, your house, your belongings, your body. Can't touch this. In Jesus' name. Can't touch this. In Jesus' name. Can't touch this. In Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus stands against you in Jesus' name. Know who your daddy is. All right. I'm done fussing because I, I get sick and tired of people being beat up by the devil. The devil ain't nothing. He ain't nothing to... You know how, how Lynette was saying the other night, you know, you be something to, to reckon with. The devil ain't nothing to reckon with. Not as long as you have Jesus. You walk in somebody's house and you see a roach. What you going to do? Put your foot on it. Put your foot on the devil. Quit being a ninny. Quit being a wimp. Quit being faked out. He tries to kick you out of the game. No, you kick him off the court. You're trespassing, Satan. Get up out of my face in Jesus' name. What did Jesus say? I am the resurrection and the life. You can't get more powerful than that, y'all. Even death has to take up, tuck its tail between its legs and run. Whew, I'm about to sweat. Whew. Golly, got hot up in here. <laughs>